You know, Russell, I, I was... I oh. meant to ask you this earlier, because I found out, I only found out just for the programme that Russell Kane isn't your real name. No. What? I, I know, I know. I, I, when I first started stand-up, my surname's it's a, like a, some sort of French Huguenot name and no-one could pronounce it. So. What, is, what is the your proper name? It's easy to copy. It's Greno. 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 But it's spelled G-R-I-N-E-A-U. Like so Grin, Grinier. That's how I was being brought on stage. Yeah. Um, so I was like, well, I need, to, I need to think of a name. So my girlfriend at the time, I was like, we need to think of a, a surname that flows with Russell. I wish I'd known how many other Russells there were in comedy, because I would have <laughs> yeah, changed change my that first one? name. Yeah. But I... Um, <laughs> <laughs> Lee Max said, he's got this thing, he says, the letter K is the funniest letter in the alphabet. It's a yeah. hard sound, it's funny. So we literally got drunk one night and I picked a new name and I changed it by Depot. Russell Kane. That was oh, it. It's a good name. It. it is good. But Russell, you sort of changed it up. When I first saw you, when Russell first appeared on the screen or certainly appeared on my radar, it was a very different sort of Russell Kane. <laughs> After that, you went more into the <laughs> eyeliner and the tight jeans. So what happened was, I came out of what I thought was my forever relationship, we're going to be together forever, this girl I was with, and that relationship broke down at the worst possible moment. I won this big comedy award, which I did accept, because <laughs> it was actually about the, the stand-up. Yeah. Got all this exposure, started to be on TV, never been single in my life from the age of 16 to that, never had a one-night stand, never had female... I left school without kissing a girl. So this whole world came at me and I just wasn't ready. And it, and it attacked me on every level. My hair went up. It was like a peacock coming out. I started reducing my age and tweaking my look, Joan. I, I mean, whatever it takes to survive in the business, I, I thought, I'm going to do it. And uh, I just went... I went a bit crazy for two but years. That... But unfortunately, it's when the cameras were on me and I had a bit of a dodgy two years. Yeah, because it's so weird. So that, this was you sort of like, I'm celebrating my success. I want to look... No, the way I feel I am inside. What was That's it? very kind of you. Basically, I turned into a twat like... for two years. <laughs> no, but in your defence, that was like Jedward era, no? Jedward era. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like that was. It was Robin. Like, yeah, that was the norm. In your defence, everyone looked stupid for two years. Everyone was a. Well, I lost a very of... charitable way of looking. At you never looked like that, did you, Tyson? Did you have a bad period? I never had hair like that. Ever. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Look, oh, that's young God. Tyson. Look, he was a hottie. Oh yeah, just after training there, two hours. Why does it so. say the word tit on the punch? Oh my God. <laughs> um, so when did you say it? What prompted you to make the change, though, from the more flamboyant, peacock-looking Russell Kane that we've just seen? It was costing me work. To I this mean, now? So a, friend, a friend tried to tell me, and I wouldn't listen. Um, and then, one night I was on stage with this... Four... The, the theatres were full, but I was struggling more with the telly work. It was really weird. The theatres were full to the back. But people... I think if you suddenly change your look or suddenly start behaving differently, right? People are like, is this person OK? Is this person authentic? <laughs> and with comedy, if people smell an inauthentic, you're screwed. So I went on stage one night in, in Chester. It's an amazing gig. And boom, there's this girl in, in the front row. Just, I know it sounds ridiculous. I fell, in, fell in love like that. First time I spoke to my wife, she was sat with her mum and dad in the front row of my gig. She was wearing, like, this fake fur stole, which I took off her, and I improvised on stage. And she's got, like, posh... You know, like, does posh northern voice when she's out in public. <laughs> so I was on stage going, oh, I'm so posh, when I wax myself, mink fur comes off my pelvis. <laughs> so that was the first thing I ever did, was make an inappropriate minky joke in front of her parents. <laughs> and I said to my tour manager, do you know what? I bet I never see that girl again. I just, I've got to try and stalk her. So I just sent this tweet up into the atmosphere, no hashtag. What sent, year was this? How long? This is seven, eight years ago. Okay. I sent the word minky up into the internet and someone went, that's my friend. She's been talking about it. You shamed her in front of her parents. So, follow, follow, <laughs> date, date, marry, marry. And on the inside of my wedding ring, it says, you have me at Minky. <laughs> and the first thing she did, so like, second or third date, she went, can I tell you something? She went, stop dressing like a twat, you're a good-looking lad. Wear this, do that, change your management. Oh. I did all those things, and the rest is history. Wow. You need a good woman to sort so you out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice to hear. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>